Good. All right. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Lisa Muth. Today we have our Take Charge Tuesday. Today is not a Monday. It really is a Tuesday, but for some people it may feel like a Monday because we had that holiday yesterday for Memorial Day. But today I have my friend, our blessed friend here, Pamela Bridgman. She's going to talk to us today about embracing mindfulness, handling stress in the midst of the pandemic, and I think we all need to know a little bit more about that. Pamela has been a GCBN member as long as I can remember, as long as I've been part of the organization. She's just such a blessing. I got to meet her through uh, GGG, which is one of the events that we have every year. Yes. I know Pamela would tell you probably, too. That it's just one that you have, if you are a woman and you, even if you don't like golf, it is a place for you to go. It's like, a, it's a women's retreat. You hear phenomenal speakers like Pamela and from Miss Dawn and all, Dr. Dawn, and all uh, of these amazing speakers who pour into you throughout the weekend. You have your own um scenic view of of stone mountain in the past i know that we may be looking at another venue this month or this year but um it's beautiful it's amazing and then you do get to have a little bit of golf time and uh even if you don't like golf it's super fun to just you know ride around on the golf cart get to know one another laugh cut up make memories and it's just i just love it i don't think i'll not go ever <laughs> so, okay either Yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Pamela. Pamela, um, this is your time. If there's any questions that come in, I'll make sure to field those to you. We'll keep them to the end. And, um, and then at the end, we'll just let them know how to find you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Hi, I am going to talk to you about embracing mindfulness as a way to handle stress in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, in what ways can we be stressed? We can be stressed in our mind. We can be stressed in our spirit. We can be stressed in our body. In our bodies, that stress shows up as medical problems or aches and pains. Um, in our spirit, it shows up as apathy, distance from God, a lack of uh, spirituality. And in our mind and in our soul, it shows up as mental illness, as stress, as um, feelings of, of, of abandonment and rejection. And here during this pandemic, just the soul sucking isolation that happens. And so those are the three areas of our lives in which we can be stressed. And so when I start to talk to you about specific mindfulness practices, I'm going to address all three of those areas. Because just like the God that I serve, and hopefully that you serve, we are triune beings. And we cannot go through life without addressing all three areas of those uh, of our being. In fact, even atheists and agnostics recognize that it's more than just the physical that has to be addressed. And so I'm gonna talk about those three parts of our being that need to be addressed and how we can address it with this whole concept of mindfulness. So what, what, is, what is mindfulness? Well, the strict definition is uh, it's the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. Uh, for instance, uh, their mindfulness of the wider uh, cinematic tradition. You know, just being mindful or aware that there's something else that uh, is related to whatever you're doing. Uh, in terms of mental health, which is the arena um, that I swim in, uh, it's a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. Keep that phrase in mind, the present moment, while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. So it's staying in the present moment, but not uh, like, oh, nothing else exists. Yeah, the world is still, still there. It's just that you're able to 
um, exist uh, almost in a bubble uh, when you're mindful. Mindfulness is a basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and here's the key, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed of what's going on around, around us. Do you understand why I want to talk about mindfulness during this shelter at home and um, all that's that's been uh, forced upon us during this pandemic? I, I want us to not be overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Now, is the concept of mindfulness compatible with so typically when people are uh, introduced to mindfulness, uh, they may see a picture of somebody seated in the lotus position, you know, with their corner finger and their thumb, you know, like they're in that uh, Far Eastern meditative state. Uh, and so immediately they go, oh, I'm not gonna even look into that. That can't possibly be Christian. Uh, something that a Christian sh should look into uh, that's got to be completely pagan and I am not going to subject myself to that. Please put that out of your mind. <laughs> yes, uh, pagans and I'm sure other religions practice their forms of mindfulness. But we as Christians from the beginning have been instructed to be mindful. We're told, um, we're called to be mindful of our unity with Christ in the presence of his spirit. And it's that awareness that we live with gratitude and move toward others with compassion. So uh, being, being mindful is a common, is a, I'm sorry, not common core, but a main core of the Christian faith. Um, so it's just good to center yourself. And center is another term you will hear when people talk about mindfulness, which again, you know, may scare people off who are, um, you know, Christians when they hear the word centering, because that's another word that's used in, um, new age kind of practices and all of that. I am not at all encouraging you to use new age practices. No, let me tell you what centering is from our perspective as Christians. Centering is simply what you and I do when we either sit down, kneel down, or whatever it is that we do, get ourselves focused so that we can hear from the Holy Spirit. That's all center means. It's the ability to get quiet uh, for uh, New Agers and pagan practices. It's emptying your mind. Well, folks, don't empty your mind. You empty your mind, that allows for something ungodly. No, don't empty your mind. Get quiet. And how many times during your reading of the scripture have you read the phrase? Um, one of my favorite ones is over in Habakkuk where it says, Be still, the Lord is in his home. So that's all mindfulness, or, or rather, centering is. It's getting to that place of being still. And it's being still so that you can then, well, remember I said to you at the beginning, there are three aspects of our being, right? Mental and emotional, our mind, spiritual, and body. So being still is so that you'll be able to hear what God puts into your consciousness or your mental and emotional health or into your spirit for your spiritual. That's all. That's the reason you want to be 
things. Uh, when I talk to my clients who are not acknowledged Christ followers, they understand this concept of centering and being still so that you can, they use the word intuition so that you can access your intuition. Those of us who are Christ followers, you know, we're using the terminology. So I told you what mindfulness is, and I've told you why we want to practice it in this stressful time. And I've told you um, the parts of our beings that it helps us. Now let me talk to you about a few mindful practices that reduce stress, or that reduce stress. The first one is uh, creating a sacred space. So uh, one of my favorites in, in my own life was, and I'm living in a different place now, I have my sacred space in my current uh, home, but uh, I lived in this cute little cottage that had a sun room and it was there that was my sacred space. I decorated it with uh, my favorite. I'm, I'm a, uh, uh, I like uh, Monet. So I had a number of Monet prints uh, and I had, uh, it was also where I had my library and a little table where I could go out and drink my coffee and sit and be quiet. This is interesting. I'm, I'm a preacher, but here's something I want you to understand. That is not the place where I prepared sermons. That's not the place where I, because preparing sermons or Sunday school lessons is working. No, that was my place to be mindful. Hope you understand what I'm saying here. The sacred space is a space where you go to get it's not the space where you go to write or do anything work related or even ministry related. Even those of us in the ministry need to make sure that we do some self care. Your, your sacred space is that space. So during this coronavirus pandemic, create yourself a sacred space. Even if it's a little corner in your bedroom, a little corner in your den. Now, here's another caveat. It's the place for you. It's not even where your husband comes or your children come, unless you invite them in. But it's the space for you. They need to create their own sacred spaces. And parents, you need to guide your children creating their sacred space, letting them know what the purpose is. Okay? So create a sacred space. That's one mindful practice. Another mindful practice is to pray or to meditate. Uh, the prayer is, uh, you can use it as a time for supplication prayer, but Typically, supplication prayers will maybe lead you to concern because you're talking, thinking about all of your problems and saying, oh, God, solve this problem, solve this problem. But we don't want you focusing on your problems. So during this time, we want you to do prayers of praise and thanksgiving and meditate on um, one of my favorite uh, plaques, you see me turn away from the camera, I point to my clients, and it's whether they're believers or not. But it's a scripture from Philippians that says, whatsoever is true, noble, good, right, think on this and these things. Well, that's the meditation you want to do. You want to do, think upon all of those things that are good and right and noble, right? So, first one was create a sacred space. Second one, Pray and meditate. A third one is learn to do diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, in, other, in some places, if you look it up on YouTube, it's called mindful breathing. 
And that's where you're breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. In through your nose, hold it for five count. Breathe out through your mouth for five count. Wait for five count. And you do that repetitive several times. Uh, what's the reason for that? Diaphragmatic breathing helps to get oxygen to oxygen to your brain calms you down. And when you calm, not feeling anxious and overwhelmed with all those things that that you know get you toxic. So diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing. Another one is journaling. Journaling is different from keeping a diary. A diary is um, sort of like, well, it's a thing with ten tools. <laughs> and a journal, journaling is writing down those things for which you're grateful, or it's a place for you to be creative, like if you write poetry or or uh, little um, short stories but you know journaling is a place to to be creative you can talk about the things that are going on in your life but this kind of journaling is really a place to be creative. so learning to journal the other one keep an attitude of gratitude Man, gratefulness goes a long way, a long way to keeping you uh, healthy. So when I talk about sheltering at home, I don't call it sheltering at home or this mandatory sh shutdown. I call it this unexpected sabbatical. So if we think of it in terms of an unexpected sabbatical, we're not quite so cynical about sheltering. So an unexpected sabbatical is me being grateful that God intervened in uh, our lives and slowed us down. <laughs> you know, uh, because, you know, the government could have chosen not to make us shelter at home, but the Holy Spirit put it on somebody's mind that, oh, you know, maybe you can handle this coronavirus by letting them shelter at home for a while. Now they got to come back out, but give them a brief sabbatical. So keeping an attitude of gratitude. Okay? So create a sacred space, stay and meditate, breathe, journal, attitude of gratitude. The next one is perform acts of kindness perhaps we can't get out uh, because of the shelter at home but technology is awesome you can facetime you can zoom you can um all kinds of ways <laughs> you can see people's faces you can send them um Amazon is still delivering, uh, and Amazon has now bought Whole Foods. So uh, I just sent my sister, uh, she was talking about wanting some catnip tea. So I ordered her uh, catnip from Whole Foods and had it delivered to me. So you can do uh, perform acts of kindness in all kinds of ways, even though we're in this unexpected. That. The next thing is maintain your sense of worth. Um, this one, um, I, I, I apologize. Oh, no, I don't. Apologize. Uh, this one I can best uh, promote to Christ followers because I can say to Christ followers, remember that your worth is in Christ. Your worth isn't in anything that you do. Your worth isn't in what other people think about you. Your worth is in the fact that you are accepted in the beloved. Your worth is in the fact that he knew you 
in your mother's womb. You are worthy just because. Not because you did this, not because you did that, not because you're going to be, but just because. So maintain that sense. And if you're constantly raising that prayer to God, you constantly experience that sense of love coming back. Um, and when um, I talk to my clients who are not believers, um, this is still something I say to them. Find within yourself, recognize that you don't have to listen to the voices you know, around you dictating to you whether you doesn't come from other people. And finally, laugh. Laugh. I will assign my clients to go into YouTube and find a good, clean comedian and laugh. Or find yourself uh, some jokes and read them and just laugh. The scripture says that laughter is good medicine. And I'm telling you, one of the best mindful practices that you can engage is laughter. So find someone who can tell you some good jokes or tell you something from uh, their childhood uh, that they're not embarrassed to tell you and just laugh. So the mindful practices uh, is uh, create a sacred space, pray and meditate, do diaphragmatic breathing, journal, keep yourself with an attitude of gratitude, perform acts of kindness, maintain a sense of worth, and laugh. And those are the ways that you can handle stress in the midst of Lisa? That is incredible. I love that there are things that maybe people do already, but not in, you know, like maybe someone journals, but they don't do the other things. I, and I love that you have packed it together in a way that we can do it. And you explained it to us that it makes sense. It makes so much sense. Um, so I have to apologize to you because I got your name wrong. Pamela, this is the first time that we've had you back speaking on our platform and you got married <laughs> yes. Good for you Yay. so so this is actually pamela bridgman bartell correct correct yay that and is my husband's running for u.s senate yes i just saw that i was doing some some covert operations behind the scenes <laughs> Because I was like, oh, no, I had said her name wrong. But, and you know what? I'm doing this all backwards. But you know what? Since May is my month, um, because Beth isn't here right now, she's she's doing her writing for God. Um, I'm just going to mess it up all the way. <laughs> so I'm going to read your bio now at the end, because that makes sense. <laughs> and I remembered, too, why, not why, but one of the other reasons that I think that we connected so well is because we're both veterans as well. Yes. And yes. yeah. And so yes. I was reading your bio again. I was like, yes, yes. And not that I didn't remember. It was just, as I was reading, I was like, yes, yes. That's, that's another reason Pamela is my friend. <laughs> so I'm going to read Pamela's bio. You're just going to have to sit there and let us talk good things about you. <laughs> Because this is supposed to happen at the beginning, but I forgot. <laughs> I'm going to read Pamela's bio, and we have Pamela Bridgman Bartell with us. Um, her husband is Al, so I'm just going to go ahead and mention that um, because in, in the bio that I have, um, it doesn't have that, but I'm just going to, we're excited to bring him to the family too. Al Bartell, welcome, <laughs> U.S. Senator of uh, running there. So, okay, so here's her bio. It might sound unbelievable, but Pamela knew she would become a social worker when she was just 15 years old, guys. She saw the compassion of a family friend toward a weeping, unwed, pregnant teenager, and her heart longed to become that kind of comforter. And I have chills because that is who, if you meet Pamela in person, that is who she is. 
She is an Air Force veteran who spent the last 36 years, which is probably going on 37 now, uh, serving individuals, making their way through tough times. She has a master's degree in social work from the University of Georgia, a master's degree in human relations from Pacific Lutheran University, and a bachelor's degree in social work from the University of Montebello, right? Is that how you say that? Montebello. Yep. Yay! Okay. Uh, her initial credentialing credentialing for substance abuse counseling was obtained while she was on active duty in the Air Force. Pamela is a licensed clinical social worker, a master addictions counselor, and it also says she is a certified clinical trauma professional. She um, owns a, heal it's called A Healing Journey Counseling and Consultation in Cartersville, Georgia. So that's how you can find Pamela. She is on, um, she has a, a website as well. Um, you can Google her, you can find her here, or you can just comment to this video if you're on Facebook and you can find Pamela because she's part of our organization as well. Her clinical interventions are guided by spiritual principles and are undergirded with compassion, integrity, persistence, and respect. She is the grandmother of two awesome teenagers, Sydney, Kayla, uh, 15, and Raymond, Michael, 13. And um, they are student athletes and they're also leaders. And now we get to add Al to the bio too. So welcome to the family, Al. And Pamela, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us some amazing things to think on and to implement. You know, it's good thank to- Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's good to know things, but like we've got to do them. We've got to do them. So if you guys need to find Pamela, you can find her here or you can um, find her at A Healing Journey Counseling and Consultation in Cartersville. All right, Pamela, if they have any, I haven't seen any questions, but if we have any come through, we will try to get a hold of you and you can help us answer those questions. All right. Thank you for the invite. Yes, we're so glad to have you on our Take Charge Tuesday. <laughs> All right, guys, and if you need anything, we are here. You can reach out in the messenger. Um, we are June is next week. Can you believe it? It's, I can't even believe it right now. I know, I know. June is next week. Um, for those of you that um, are familiar with our Take Charge Tuesday, you're welcome to share this out on your Facebook. It is on our Facebook group, the Georgia Christian Business Network, LLC. Um, and you can, you can find that video, you can share it to um, your page, and that'll help us to reach other people who may need what Pamela yes. has shared with us today, because there's a lot of people that are hurting, they don't have the Lord, and they just need some comfort and some help, and these are some great things and tips that she's given us to be able to charge forward, and I loved your, in your attitude of gratitude, how you mentioned that it is, um, I wrote it down here, let me see what you said, where is it, oh, I didn't write it down, no, an unexpected sabbatical, I did, because it's all in how you look at it. And I know for us, we have become stronger as a family being together, which I know that doesn't always happen for some. And I know some kids who are not able to go to school and their home life is very hard. But for me and my family, it seems like to, that we're yeah. closer, um, which I'm thankful for, you know, and we could totally just gripe and complain about how we can't go to Walmart or whatever, but it's not, that's not edifying. It's not going to help the situation. So it's totally in how you look at it. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today and we will talk to you later. Bye thank guys. You. Bye bye. bye.